if you follow your purpose, it's going to exit your ass out of that job. You ain't going to have to figure it out, none of that. If you know what your purpose is and you follow that, it's going to open up all, all of the doors. As long as you stay true to yourself, it's true to your purpose, it's going to be like, if I don't know this, I did this 10 years ago. Right. Well, you wasn't ready 10 years right. ago. Right, but you're ready now. Right. I've been tapping into my intuition and trusting it more, which has been a process. I started, I guess you could say I woke up four years ago, so it's been kind of hard for me to learn to trust that still little voice inside, but the more I do it, the more I get used to it. And I guess it's a a, tr a, a test of faith, just because I'm just, I'm scared to move forward, and that's what's keeping me stagnant. Okay, so now, anytime you feel fear, fear is it's artificially inserted into you in your education to prevent you from pursuing your purpose. Analyze the fear so you can find out who put it there and what their agenda was because you might find who trying to steal your birthright by accident. They they made me feel like I need them, like that I need them to go forward, and that's not true. I'm going to tell you who you need. You can't go forward without you. Right. Everybody in the world can try to push you to go forward, but you cannot go forward without you. It, it won't happen. You're right. So the, you the spearhead to your forward progress. All you got to do is keep your eye on the target and the trajectory is straight. Right. Stay focused. Mm -hmm. Remember, people are going to come with the ability to assist you. But if you don't know how to use their abilities where you need them at, it's going to slow you down. So that's the same. Mm-hmm. Okay. You have to get to know the people that you're dealing with and know what they're capable of. What's their skill set? Right. So what's their purpose? Because if you can marry two people purpose together, it gives y'all a thousand times more power. This is why sister healing groups is important. Because normally you find somebody healed enough to help work with you. Right, so if you can get three, it shits moving at breakneck speed. And I know of some women who are embarking on our spiritual journey and prioritizing. So we could just get in a room and just, you know, just get in a room together. Maybe we could like. Right. So here's the thing, y'all got different skill sets. How can y'all use all of y'all purposes to help each other? Purpose is the question y'all try to answer. Right. You might find out that y'all got enough skills, know-how, where y'all can put something together and be self-sufficient without ever asking for a dollar from nobody. It'll just come. And me, my sister, she grows marijuana, and that's you know how to use her hands. That's her skill. And one of my skills is um being able to read energy. Just like if I go in the room, I can just read what's going on. If I'm around people, I can pick up on their stories. And she also has psychic gifts too. So I'm just thinking, how can we combine? I'm also a writer. I'm a creator in general. So I'm just thinking, how can we combine our strengths to create something? Well, y'all probably used to play certain games when y'all was little, practicing being adults. Go back to that time and remember that imaginative quality y'all had and use that to bring y'all skills together now. And that'll help. Okay, that's a good that's good advice. I'll do that. But those who cultivate the marijuana, right? So her totem is probably a dog, and then um, even if she don't have one, it could still be her totem animal. And because um, the cannabis, the totem that normally comes with is the canine, and normally these people are loners; they be alone a lot. Yes, yeah, right. Is. And that's because the that's why they got the dog as the companion to keep them company because they spend so much time alone. But this also gives them the opportunity to study their product, what they growing, how it grow. And before you know it, they not alone no more and they no longer loners. They built something from that lonely place. Right. She needed that isolation so she could focus on her craft, mm -hmm. which I mm -hmm. Because she was been working really hard, and I'm, I am proud of her. I could tell she's really proud of what she created. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
and then the more encouraging and loving support you give her, the and the, it's going to come back to you. Reciprocity, mm -hmm. gratitude, and love. Them three ingredients right there are going to overcome 98% of y'all obstacles. And we got a lot of that to give to each other. We have a unique story just because we didn't grow up together, but we rekindled our relationship in 2018. And we're mm -hmm. getting closer. And it's really been healing me because I didn't know a part of me was really missing until we got closer, you know. Mm -hmm. And what's something yeah. that really brought us closer is me, us losing our grandmother two months ago Did, and having to deal with it. Y'all both knew your grandmother though, right? Uh, I, I, my grandma raised me, but she didn't really know my other sister well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. so you the one who got the seasoning from the elder. Yeah. My grandma right. definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So she the one taught you how to reach out to your sister by the way she raised you. Yeah. Right. She so that's that that's that's the compassionate side of Granny that's driving you. So now you know where your compassion is derived from. I do. Right. And your personal nature is the desire for the sister. Absolutely. You, so yeah. this combination makes you a perfect person to bring healing to your sister. It does. It does. It's a, I saw it because it's a big job, but I know I can handle it and it would be fulfilling for both of us. I'm going to tell you this biggest jobs got the biggest rewards. Yeah. I know what I need to do. I do. I'm glad I was able to, uh, be a some assistance. Thank you. I'm glad that you accepted my request. I wasn't expecting to talk to you tonight. I've been looking up to you for a while, so it means something. I appreciate that. Maybe I bump into you next time I come that way. Maybe. I'll mm -hmm. definitely be paying attention. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right, sweetie. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. All right. I'm loving this energy, man. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Tony, hey, we finally made it together. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Where you calling from? Atlanta, ATL. ATL in the house. What's your name, sweetie? I'm Latanya, rebirth by Latanya, the one that's always talking to you in the comments. Yeah, former yeah. Nation of Islam, former MGT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how you doing? I'm doing really good, Brother Rod. I just wanted to get on because you are touching in the space of my work, and and I love that. I love what you're doing because you attract so many young women who, and just young men and women. And one of the things that I know is that the Gen Xers and the millennials, there's a, lot, a bridge that needs to be, be um, built between a, a lot of us. A lot of young women say things like, you know, I don't trust women. I don't trust working with women. So I just wanted to come on and encourage Gen Xers to not judge millennials and Gen Z, to be a bridge for them because some of them really are angry as hell with us because we've dropped the ball. So there has to be some atonement and a spirit of atonement with between women as well. I just I won't, because you know I've been working with Young Love Van Zandt for over twenty years, and even though y'all don't see the work that she does I in the deep, see y'all, y'all. I've been watching her for at least twenty five years. Yeah, so <laughs> I've been with her for twenty years. And I worked on Yamla Fix My Life as well. And it was the young women who were writing in trying to heal their families. So I just wanted to, you know, to, to one, encourage you and to support you because that's, that's what we do over here. My hu I have to give credit to my husband because he was like, just get on. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, let, let the king be heard, you know. <laughs> the, the thing is this, sweetie, that was the purpose of the Million Women March and that atonement and the breaking down of those op see we had people actively interfering with our progress and a lot of the youth is just now getting this part of the information about the people that was interfering 
with the elders teaching the, the elder women teaching the younger women about basic womanhood right yeah. you had it was being actively assaulted by military means that we never seen in our communities because we thought we was living a civilian life mm -hmm. right we're not living a civilian life we live in the life of a people that's an occupied territory Mm. And a lot of us now is starting to tell the youth the truth. And they starting to see that the reason why we, the elders over us was unsuccessful is because they didn't, they just flat out didn't have the intellectual yeah. training to be able to read through the things that was being done to our people. Yeah. Now we have a whole new generation of educated people coming from every angle doing different work like brother collides dealing with solar flares and uvb rays i'm not dealing with that right now because he got that well covered yes right and so i don't have to worry about telling them about keeping a consistent daily report on uv uvb uva um the solar flares the um, schumann residence which is going to tell us when it flips and these spikes is the waking up of the mother earth that's that's her energy bursts mm -hmm. right because we starting to reach these women on all levels the elders the middle age and the young ones who tell them about the processes of healing yeah right so when they see that sister like i brought up on the video i had done for the public service announcement when they see the work she doing if they can just be in the experience alone does great works to because the mitochondria is going to heal you all you have to do is get around yes. enough sisters that's healing and healed and it's just going to automatically happen and that's the importance of those sister healing groups that's why when a woman tell me that i can't i can't get along with women that's because you're not healed absolutely it's because um there's a breakdown usually between her and her mother and so when a woman says that, she thinks that she's wearing a badge of honor. But what she's doing for a woman who's healed, she knows, I know when I hear it, right? I know that this is a woman who is wounded. And so that's really why I came on is to encourage some of the young women to be more courageous, to get in spaces with some of us elders who, who will love you, who will remother you. Because this work is happening. Haley, hey, what Haley Barber is doing is absolutely amazing. But there are many people who are not on the Internet. I know I, I've run rights of passages working with Gen X women, mainly and millennials. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of millionaire millennial women who are getting the bag, Brother Rod, but they are broken. They are burnt out and they, they're looking for someone to embrace them. They don't mm -hmm. even know how broken they are until they come into the room with a woman who can see them and heal them you know and i i was there if i had not had healing circles i probably i don't know where i would have been and what i would have done you know and a lot of us run to the church right and there's still healing that needs to be done in in these religious organizations a lot of so, them are, are exploitation factories yes. for women's energy anyway yeah they use the church as a as a mother har energy harvester in order to manipulate people yes and they, and they they make you afraid of African traditional religion, mm -hmm. you know. So this is why when Which, the other young sister was speaking, I could see the I could see the ancestral spirits all around her, and I'm like, get into a misa, come and sit at the white table, so you can so you can experience, you know, letting your gifts shine without feeling judged and feeling afraid of it. And so I love what you're doing because we need it. We and and sometimes the young sisters need to hear. They I love how they call you Uncle Rod. <laughs> they call me Auntie. Mm -hmm. We not that, that old. That, that that before I ever started this in real life, that's who I've been, Uncle Rod. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a whole bunch of names. You know, but Uncle Rod it seems to be the most popular one. Yeah, but then you got to remember, I got about fifty nieces and nephews, and real blood nieces and nephews, right? My sisters and brothers' children. So, and then that some of them got children, right? So, then I got little cousins that called me Uncle Rod because I was instrumental in their life, right? So, that's right there. A couple hundred children in the family that called me Uncle Rod. So the name is not. I'm just, you know. 
<laughs> well, I, well, you know, you are being supported by a lot of us who are quiet, but I couldn't leave you out there by yourself tonight. I know that we're going to do our live soon, but I just had to come. And so my husband really was the one who was like, just get on there. And you know, I love it when you talk about the Orisha because, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I just think that there's so many ways for our young women to find their way back to the mother, the great cosmic mother, the primordial mother. It's no yeah. accident that these sisters are on this live listening tonight. Like, don't, sisters, if you are listening, don't go to sleep with those questions inside of you. You are not here by accident. No. You, you, I call it a feminine soul call. It is when the mother is starting to speak to you through other people. And it doesn't just have to be pain. A lot of black, black women only know how to do the work through pain because we have a pain-based relationship with God. But we can also get to know the work through through our sensuality, through pleasure, through through you know healthy relationship with our body. You know that's why I always say the ones dancing they don't feel the oppression the same way as the ones complaining about them while they dancing. Yes. The ones that's judging, the ones that's dancing, they don't understand that the uterus is a musical instrument in the primordial realm mm -hmm. that tells us how healed the earth is. When the women stop dancing, we in trouble. I say, I say, and listen, and now what you're saying is so powerful because when you come to African traditional ceremonies, we dance. Your dance is a prayer. Not when you go to the over here, over here, over here. Well, over yeah. here. here. Go to go. What we, what we see in New Orleans is a yeah. sliver. It's a come on now. It's a, it's a sliver of our original culture that's been kept alive in Mardi Gras. They wear feathers. Listen, they don't my wear feathers. Is an Indian. My husband is an Indian. <laughs> that's that's home. Oh. You talking okay, about you home got, right now? <laughs> yeah, you gave me three knocks, so he got to come say hi to these people that's watching because oh, they want to oh, say okay. hi. Ba babe, I know you're watching. I know you're in. The he went to the other room, so it wouldn't echo. So, Smokey, come upstairs so you can say hi. <laughs> but yes, we second line in New Orleans. The second line is is a way of going into trance, right? The New Orleans Indians is a is the culture keepers. This is the the fe they've been they tell the story. They wear the suit. Like you, yeah, you're right. It's not just African traditional. Really, here here comes my husband. <laughs> He talks to you in the in the chat too. <laughs> peace, God. Peace, peace, brother Rod. <laughs> yeah, good, good. to the king. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, the, your wife gave me three knocks on the husband knock. So the divine masculine next to the divine feminine, right? This that's that's a royal arc degree. I was telling about the Indians and that you are Indian. Yes, sir. You gotta say a little Indian. Mm -hmm. something. Chawa. Chawa, all the way from uptown, you heard me? <laughs> <laughs> all the way down to the ENO, back to the Detroit and the 313 to the 248 in the Yak Town, because we don't That's back right. down. Yeah, <laughs> you know the boys in the Big Easy say, man, what's your rap? <laughs> high B, high B, blood, high B, brother. <laughs> it beats high B, you know how it is. Man, it's good to see you, brother. Man, you too, man. We gonna keep it up, man. We, we about to get it all back, so... They can do whatever tantrum they want on their way out. Let them, let them perform. That's know? right. Let them perform. They can clown. They can derail their trains and spill toxic waste. Big Mama say, just, just let them do what they want to do. Just let them get the fuck on. That's right. She don't, to go. don't want us take. She don't want us taking their scalps this time. So she got another remedy for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to take some some heads. Fuck a scalp. <laughs> I want to have a guillotine concert. We just <laughs> 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 all them look, all them Jayhawks get caught hawking, chop their Jay off. You know what I'm saying? That's for the That's for the culture, man. That's for the culture for the people. We ain't never stopped being who we was. That's how we can remember who we are. Absolutely. They, they can teach us what. Whatever they want, but they can't take it out the DNA. It's the it's the culture. It's gonna always reemerge on top. Absolutely. 
And you got two Choctaw sitting here, right, right here, straight from that, from the Mississippian culture, right here. Hey, look, I had uh, Chief Redfeather, Choctaw out of Memphis, call me yesterday while I was meditating on the dock. Ooh. <laughs> he was showing me the land. He told me to come down there and go fishing. My OG down there in Memphis, too. He wanted me to come fishing for some brim. I told him I'm going to come down there uh, sooner or later. I got to get this work done first. That's right. Ain't no days off for the job finish. That's right. Hey, when we get together, we're going to do it big. Yep. Coast to coast Mardi Gras. We're going to we show them every line, not just the second line. That's right. right. <laughs> we gonna be, that's right. At the first. We're at the beginning. You know? Mm -hmm. so yep. Keep on doing the work, brother. We appreciate it, bro. All right, man. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to take right. another call now. I appreciate y'all calling me, and this is just making my day. I'm, I'm over here in euphoria. <laughs> we love you, brother Rod. <laughs> y'all too all right ciao all right there's some real ass shit here today oh yeah you know i got dog you know i got to call you in here you know i got to call you in here i'm trying to talk to the sisters i see my brother i got to say something to him peace what's god going on god you got what's happening? you got it what's going what's on i hear you yeah okay we'll just wait till i'm free but i just had to step in and let you know, nigga, whenever you come to the M town, I got you. For sure. You hear me? For sure, for sure. Yeah, when, anytime you come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to be yes, down sir. there. I just got to I just gotta make sure, sure that these last little uh, dots get connected as I see them. So I did my per public service announcement earlier for the sisters. You know, and All this, right. you know, this is mostly I was I was focusing on the sisters, but you know, I had to I had to holler at you for a minute. Yeah, yeah just for a minute, because I just I just had to say that, and you know, Spirit gonna let me say it, so you'll know what it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got you. Yeah. Memphis yeah. is okay. Right. Memphis, Memphis is as Memphis does. They know Memphis where they hard on their sleeve. You, you can't. You can't already know. You get what you get down there. You already know Orange Mountain, Tennessee, in the motherfucking house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, peace to the gods yes, raising the sisters. Yep, let's get it in, man. Already, yep. but um, already, I'm I'm gonna take already. another one of these sisters, probably two of them, and then I'm gonna call it a night. All right, God, appreciate you. All right, peace, God, peace, God. I got you. Mm -hmm. Almost feel good enough to give y'all some bars up in here. Some phenomenal woman shit. Some Maya Angelou knockback. Maya Angelou had a hell of a story. If y'all read, I know why Cage Bird sings. Singing, swinging, getting married like Christmas. All guys, children need traveling shoes. That woman knows she can write. Mm. I thought I thought she was gonna be around to see this shit because I sure wanted her to be on my council of elders. And there's a whole bunch of elders that I wanted there that's gone. Boy, I tell you, I should, like I wanted to get to sit with Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben, break bread, you know. Um, but you, you know, life uh, perform in the way that it perform, you know. Some, some great elders out here still that I still want to sit with. I can't wait to sit with Larry Hoover and break bread, Angel Bay, Big Tookie. I want to tell this nigga, I want to ask him, what made you let them motherfuckers freeze your ass? That's some, that shit right there. Oh my God, I can't stand being cold. God damn, you freeze me? Oh shit, I ain't gonna like that at all. I'm gonna wake up be the maddest motherfucker ever been mad. Right? So, um, try the sister. Yeah. Sit, sit, okay. Let's see, she come in. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna sit with the minister. Eat me some bean pie and some bean soup. Yeah, that bean soup be slapping. And that bean pie, that bean pie so good, make you forget about sweet potato pie, pumpkin pie, apple pie. Like who would? think that you would make a pie out of some damn beans and that mug be that slapping. You would never expect that. 
you would never expect it. Okay, well. <clears throat> Look. Hey. What up? How you doing? I sent you, I was talking to you earlier telepathically. <laughs> so I guess you received my message. Apparently so, because here we are, live in person. Yes, thank you. You, thank you and you know there are people where you calling from and telling your name so yeah, you know. my name is Mira I'm from Ch calling in from Chicago Chi town um, <laughs> and you know when I was when I had put the request in early and I was walking around to get my food I just wanted to say thank you because you you um, activate my root chakra you make me feel grounded you make the women the divine feminine feel grounded to to express themselves to show up fully and authentically so thank you because a lot of times, you know, you think that men are going to get you on this spiritual level or, or see things and perceive things. So what was coming to me earlier um, was about the perception of um, what's happening with the, the refugee. I don't know if that's the correct term, the refugees that are coming into the major cities. I wanted to get your perspective on that. And then my second question was about the Palladians. And then earlier you had talked about the Seven Sisters. So... <laughs> Um, so the immigrants that they bringing in to these cities, a lot of them are soldiers that went into the tunnels, like the the Chinese. The part of their um, terms of running in those tunnels and extracting them children was they wanted to resettle over here um, in God's country. So they using uh, the artificial invasion of the Mexican border, right, where they bring people from Haiti and they're bringing people from China. The Chinese people are being covered by bringing in people from Haiti and South America. But for what's going on right now on the land, it ain't enough border patrol to stop the migration to the mainland of North America from the rest of the tribes coming to have this celebration. We had uh, ancient um, packs with the Chinese is why we have a lot of Lee in our family lines of the tribes. Like my father's name was Arthur Lee. Um, his brother's name was Henry Lee. Yep. Right. And then my auntie on my mama's side name was Verdi Lee. Mm. Her daughter name was Bobby Lee. Right. So what we're looking at is uh, soul contracts for aid and assistance to fight the evil on the land. So, so now they come in there to assist us as opposed to being yeah, they better be because if they ain't these crips and these bloods, these GDs, vice lords, and peace stones gonna be here there. So I mean they better come in peace or they're gonna leave in pieces. But we do have agreements. The revitalization, okay, so the agreements with the name Lee goes back to a what they call the black general. Um, his name was General Lee, but it was spelled L-I. And he was a great general in China. Well, he came from over here to aid them in the war that they was having with some the, the Great Wall Wars. I just put it that way. Go back and watch the movie The Great Wall with, uh, I think, was it was it Tom Cruise? But, but go back and watch it. That's before we start killing the things that didn't belong here that came back and was born looking like us. So <clears throat> they come to assist us. We revitalized the contract at the Bangdong Conference. The Bangdong Conference was our um, tribes coming from throughout what we call the Uniting of Africa and Asia. And um, it was to use the earth conjures and to assemble all of the great heroes of the world into one persona, which would end up being Tahuti, and and um, to call him forth, which would be that's why you hear me a lot of times say I ain't here by accident. They conjured me up. Yes. There, it took the uh, uh, the unity of tribes to conjure me up. Mm. I'm not coming because one tribe want to fuck up. Okay. But when all tribes are in equal distress, then it's time for me to come clean some shit up right so and what was the other thing you asked about 
Palladians, because right now we're in the Palladian Gate. Mm -hmm. The Seven Sisters. The Seven Sisters is the Seven Seals. When the Seven Seals are broke, which is the, what you're talking about, the Pleiadian Gate is open. That's the breaking of the Seventh Seal, opening of the Pleiadian Gate. So now you go back to your Bible and you see that it was telling you a stellar arrangement to look for at the close of the age so that you would know when the seventh gate was flipped. Okay. Right. It's called the Pleiadian light lock, which was the barrier that kept us in and kept others out while we fought this war to end the evil on our planet. But by default, we freed multiple star systems by eliminating the evil that was wrenching earth if they lose one they lose it all so there's a lot of restricted will universes that's being retrained and going to matriarchal order and okay. some of them are going to patriarchal order because of the vibration of their planets right but they go on to a new order that is embracing the highest principles of freedom the individual to manifest their destiny, right? So when you say the Pleiadian seal and they talk about the galactic council, these are codes, right? Let's just say, for instance, ain't nobody out there in the stars and we all down here on the ground, but they telling us some motherfuckers coming from the stars. I'm going to read it as an energy and a coded message. I'm not 